a lot of people, you know, retire down here, but we're we're not retired and we're just enjoying the <laughs> life already, right? We're here where people want to be to play and golf and enjoy the 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 beach and we're already here. And <laughs> I'll never forget. This is a story that I can share. I'll never forget this. Many years ago when my children were little and and my husband and I were up in Washington and we came down to Orlando to take the kids to Disney. And, and I'll never forget after a long day at the Magic Kingdom and we just were just taking a break. So I want to say we 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 left the park to just go have some dinner and we intended to go back to the park for the evening and the fireworks. But I'll never forget sitting at like, I think it was like a Joe's Crab Shack and we're sitting there in Orlando and, and we're looking outside and there's palm trees and we're having a nice big cold beer. And I'm thinking to myself, I think the seed was planted but even back then, just be, being so tired of the cold up in the north and, and maybe living in Florida wouldn't be so bad. My little brother lived here in Jacksonville. So I think the idea started floating around in our heads, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, <laughs> but no, I, I love Florida and I think North Florida has a lot to offer. People do think of Disney and think of Miami and, and I think this is a little gem up here to be. It, it is a gem. You know, people say, you know, Florida is all about summer and there aren't the four seasons and it's like, well, but if you live here, you can find them, you know, at Christmas time, um, you know, it's, I, I judge it by, we do Christmas Eve service uh, every year at our church. And, and usually I end up wearing my husband's father's <laughs> winter coat instead of buying my own. And I enjoy that. It's kind of a tradition. I've only not worn it two times. So that's how cold it is on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and, uh, and it's stark. It's gray. The trees are... Um, are you know starting to turn and I noticed that in January all the beautiful colors of the maple trees and such are starting to turn in those bright oranges and golds and so yeah you're right it's not like up north where they change in September and that kind of thing but we have our own season and I remember distinctly in Michigan where the flowers would be popping up through the remaining snow on the ground mm -hmm. and yeah we would have one day of spring where everything would just burn open all at once and then it would be done and down here in Florida it's like oh there's color over here and then tomorrow there's color over there and next week look at now that azaleas are blooming and the following week oh my the daffodils are blooming so spring really does happen and it's a really long and enjoyable time where you have pops of color everywhere yes I I will agree that it's really hot uh, for the summer, you know, it, it probably gets up to 90 by May and it doesn't go away until October. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's kind of where you come from and what you appreciate. You know, I, I didn't know any different living in the UP and I loved living there. I loved the snow. I loved wearing my boots and my jackets and my scarves and gloves. And, and even when it was, you know, summertime, um, you know, we would go to the beach during the day on the 4th of July and at night we would put our winter coats on and go see the fireworks. I mean, that's just the way it was every year. And so you just learn to appreciate. Uh, I think that's how, why I appreciate Florida so much is just because I was cold a lot in Michigan. And as mm -hmm. much as I did love it and did love the snow and went snowmobiling and skiing and skating and all of that, I had enough and yeah. I didn't realize it until I moved here. And then I realized how much I really love warm weather. I never complain about the heat because I know how cold. I am. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I'm this, I'm this same way Judy and then I love Seattle I'll never say anything bad about the place I, I really thought that was my lifelong home and I, I just love the it's a beautiful corner of the world if you've never been up to the northwest but I have to say just like you I didn't realize how much I needed the sun mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I think I had I had so many issues of anxiety and you know, I think I had that seasonal affective disorder living up there and mm -hmm. being a stay-at-home mom and it was just so overcast and dark a lot and yeah. I just ever since moving here I just feel better Yes, you know? I do too. I totally agree with you 100%. And I know a lot of other people who it, they say when they moved here, it was like the clouds parted 
Yeah. And their days are sunny, even on days that when it's not sunny outside. And I really do think that as humans, we, we need that sunshine. We need that warmth. We need extra light in our life. <laughs> we do. And vitamin D. And I, mm-hmm. I absolutely 100% agree. I, I I know that I'm going to get this. The show always goes by way too fast. And, and I'll get the five minute warning any second now. So so what else? I think we both are pretty happy campers living here in Florida. How about why don't we take it to to the conversation to maybe more of a, a national level? I think that that you and I both um, you know are doing doing our best getting through this time. It, it, do, you, do you think people that are don't that do not live here in the USA, do you think what would you advise them if they wanted to come here when when the travel restrictions are lifted? And how would you advise someone who's never been to America? Where where would you direct them to go visit? Well, that's a pretty big open ended question. (laughs) (laughs) I will tell you that um, I was very fortunate when I graduated from high school many millions of years ago. My mom and dad uh, planned a United States trip. And we went from the, from Michigan across all of the states across the northern uh, of the country down toward um, California. And then we went through the bottom and kind of went up through Chicago. And uh, I will tell you, we, we stopped at a lot of famous places along the way, uh, not Disney or anything like that, but things like Mount Rushmore. And, and um, we stopped at Las Vegas. And of course we went to, um, uh, uh, the geyser place right now it escapes uh, yeah, yellowstone or... yeah, Yellowstone. that's right yeah. and, a lot, and, and the caverns down in new mexico mm-hmm. I, I would i would suggest if somebody came it's sure hit disney i mean it's it's a once in a lifetime thing if you want to but for us we took the back roads we didn't take okay. the highways and we and we got to see the people we we got to see homemade ice cream and we got to talk to the guy who sits outside the gas station with his dog you know i mean yeah. that that was real america and, and that was a joy to meet the people who live in the heartland. I, th- I think that was probably the the highlight of the trip for us. That's great advice. I love that. And, you know, thinking as I'm listening to you, there's so many places John and I haven't been to. I mean, this is such like you, you say, you know, and it's come up, you know, talking to other guests in this conversation. It, it, there's so much, the USA is a huge and beautifully, you know, such a diverse place. And, and there's so much to, to do here. So... There's so much to do, so much to see, and you have no idea just how beautiful our country is with the mountains. I mean, the oh, beautiful song, you know, the woods and purple mountains and all of that. I'm telling you, it's out there. You just have to go and drive through the states and see it. I've seen it. Um, My husband and I, we decided to do that for our honeymoon as well. And, uh, oh, my goodness, what we have seen and experienced just traveling the USA, has mm. it, they were both trips of a lifetime, and mm. we want to do it again. That's, you guys are awesome. You're such a great couple. I love it. I love, you know, whenever I check you out on Facebook, and there you are having your boat date or just doing all the things. You guys are just awesome. And I before we run out of time, let's be sure to, I would like to share with our listeners, I know you mentioned you're a business owner, so maybe um, share your website. We have just two minutes left, so just where can they visit you to learn more about your business? I know you have the Arbonne, and you look amazing, by the way. You are just so full of vitality and health, and you look amazing. So if anyone feels like they need more energy or lose a few pounds, they can work with you, and I know you can help them so where where should we uh, send our listeners uh just remember how to spell my name that's the easiest part judy de giorgio and then so it's j-u-d-y-d-i-g-e-o-r-g-i-o and uh, dot arbon.com but also look me up on facebook actually uh that's the best way to connect with me uh, we can chat we don't have to go right to the website um i rather get to know people and see what they're looking for and offer suggestions and kind of curtail and and customize what people are looking for and give them some choices so judy okay. giorgio <laughs> sounds good and i'll definitely share that on my website when we share about this this podcast so we are out of time it's as always a delight and i i so appreciate your time judy and in having a little chat with me today thank you it's been a pleasure deborah thank you thanks judy and everyone out there thank you so much for joining us today 
This is Deborah DiPietro, and I hope you enjoyed your time with me wandering around the world. Perhaps you've been reminded about something wonderful in your own backyard, learned something about a faraway place, or got some ideas for future trips. Here's to keeping wonder alive, moving forward, and connecting with our global neighbors. See you next time.